Okay, this morning we're working. Uh, this is an aquarium strain. It's a uh, red tailed blue tuxedo variatus platy. The genus Zephophorus has, a, I think, about 40 species in it. One of them is Zephophorus variatus. Now you'll note that we don't call this fish Zephophorus variatus red tailed blue. We call it variatus red tailed blue. Uh, we don't italicize variatus, which you do with scientific names. Uh, it is a variatus type. Um, all the commercial sword tails, moculatus platys, and variatus platys are hybrids, uh, usually of those three species. Well, sword, one of the sword tails is the Poplar's hellerii, which is a green sword tail. What are you looking at, Susan? <laughs> Susan, yeah. What? Susan, yeah. oh, okay. The, my filmer, director, producer is staring off in the distance and so I'm sure the camera is moving around. Anyway, the wild green sword tail is if offers Hellerii. All the sword tails you see in shops are hybrids of that fish and probably the Poplar's Moculatus and the Poplar's Variatus and maybe a few other species. We call our sword tails sword tails. We don't call them the Poplar's Hellerii red because a red sword it has to be a hybrid that's where the solid red coloration comes from is hybridization okay so this is a variatus type fish now interestingly enough this fish is very variable which you would expect with the name the parental species the wild species being Zephophorus variatus variatus means variable and that's because there's a lot of variation in the populations that's carried over into the aquarium strains and i'm going to show you uh, i'm setting up a breeding colony i'm going to discuss in a minute but let's take a look well let's take a look at those guys right now this is just a, a sample of those because i'm trying not to handle the breeders that much Okay, these are all good red tail blue tuxedos. The tuxedo pattern is that black pattern on the sides. They're kind of blue bodied, bluish green bodied, and I have a red tail. The males have yellow dorsals. That's a really nice little male. The breeding colony is going to be, there's another male back here that doesn't have an, as nice a dorsal, but he's a nice fish otherwise. These are high fins. The males are high fins. This is a high fin female. This is a non high fin female. And we're rebuilding our stock. So, what I'm doing here, the breeding colony I'm setting up has four high fin males. Kate, what is it? 27? 27. 27 high fin females and 22 non high fin females. The reason for that is I want to get a bunch of fry. So, the more females, the better. And I like to have 50 to 60 females in a breeding colony. So I picked nice non-high fin females like this one. And when she mates with these males, half of her offspring will be high fin. High fin in this strain is a homozygous lethal. Homozygous means the same uh, gene, the same characteristic inherited from both parents. So if you mate two high fins together, they have to be heterozygous or, or they wouldn't be alive. And typically you would expect three quarters high fins, one quarter normals from that mating. But what you get is two thirds high fins, one third normals because one quarter of the embryos die as embryos because they've inherited high fin from both mother and father. So mating these High fin males to low fin females, normal females, will produce 50% high fins. Mating them to the high fin females will produce two thirds, 67% on average high fins. So I'm expecting to get a bunch of high fins. Ultimately, what I want to do is have a breeding colony that's all high fin, and then we'll get two thirds high fin, one third regular. High fins bring a higher price, so we want those. Okay, so I've, uh, I'm going to put these guys up and then I'm going to show you actually they're going to be difficult to catch so I'm going to do something I normally don't do and use a net put them in with the other breeders and they'll go to their breeding vat 
shortly. Susie can edit out the part of me having trouble catching these fish. I used to be really proficient at this when I owned two retail shops, but since that time I have lost my proficiency at netting out of an aquarium. Okay, so now we're going to look at something. I told you this fish is highly variable, and what we end up with in the offspring are some non-tuxedos. This is a female that doesn't carry tuxedo. She's a red tail blue, and tuxedo is a, a dominant characteristic, so obviously some, because we got some of of non-tuxedos obviously are at least one male and one female are heterozygous for tuxedo and they throw non-tuxedos. This fish is actually a red tail black tuxedo, it has a gold body, same thing with this one, it's not quite, it, it not quite a good black because the tuxedo is not very big. Here's a fairly decent red tail black female. And the gold body color is also a recessive and so obviously some of our breeders are carrying that gold recessive. So we end up with, of course, red tail blue uh, tuxedos, but also red tail blacks and uh, red tail blue non-tuxedos in a breeding. Those numbers will come down as the generations go by because we pull out the fish that, you know, from the, we don't put these fish in a breeding colony, which means we're pulling out the genes, the alleles for non-tuxedo and for gold, reducing the percentage of those in each generation. Now, if there are any genetic geeks, I, I'll do some Hardy Weinberg calculations and show you what happens. That probably boring for most people. Susie's nodding her head so the camera's probably moving up and down. Okay, so I'm going to put our, this is our breeding colony, the 27 high-fin females, four high-fin males, and 22 regular ones. We'll put those up. We'll put these guys where they go and we'll see what happens next breeding cycle. Maybe we'll get enough high-fin females to have a, a pure high-fin breeding colony. Good fish keeping.